Welcome to this introductory tutorial for Eon Fusion. This video will provide you with a basic overview of Eon Fusion's functionality. The cursor and mouse clicks have been highlighted in this video tutorial. The cursor has a yellow halo, as you can see here. Clicks with the left mouse button are shown in red, and clicks with the right mouse button are shown in blue. First of all, we will look at the general design of the Eon Fusion application. This will help you to understand the various layout options that are available and to know where to find important commands. Window layouts are built via a combination of tabbed, floating and dockable windows. In this case, we have a single docked window in the lower portion of the screen and a group of tabbed windows in the upper portion of the screen. Tabbed windows give you an efficient means of working with groups of windows that don't need to be viewed at the same time. The lower window, which is currently docked, can be added to the group of tabbed windows by right-clicking its title bar and choosing Tab Document. The available layout options give you a lot of flexibility in how you set up the application. We recommend that you spend some time experimenting in order to find a layout that works best for you. You may have already noticed that Eon Fusion doesn't have a menu bar at the top of the application window. This is because the majority of commands are context specific and are available through the right click or context menu. You will see more examples of the context menu throughout this tutorial. Non-contextual commands are available from the menu button at the lower left of the application known as the Eon Fusion Orb. We will now look at scene views in Eon Fusion. Scene views or scenes are where data is presented for exploration in a four dimensional environment. Here is an example of a scene in Eon Fusion. You can navigate in scenes using the mouse. The middle mouse button, or scroll wheel, is an essential part of 3D navigation in Eon Fusion. Zooming is achieved by rolling the scroll wheel up or forwards, which pushes the data away from you, and down or backwards, which pulls the data towards you. You can also move the data around by holding the middle mouse button and moving the mouse. The data can be rotated by holding down the control key and the middle mouse button while moving the mouse. Panning of the viewpoint is achieved by holding down the shift key and the middle mouse button while moving the mouse. Holding the shift and control keys and the middle mouse button while moving the mouse up and down increases and decreases the vertical exaggeration of the scene view. There are alternative navigation options that use keys instead of the middle mouse button. See the Eon Fusion manual for more details. The slider at the bottom of the scene is used to navigate in the fourth dimension. We'll return to the slider and some other aspects of scenes later in this tutorial. We'll now look at the data flow view in Eon Fusion. Data flows are structures similar to flowcharts. They're used to access, combine and manipulate your data. Navigation in data flow views uses the same model that is used in the scene views. Zooming is controlled by the scroll wheel. Movement is controlled by holding the middle mouse button and moving the mouse. The structure of a data flow follows a basic pattern from left to right. Seen here at the left in dark blue are data source objects. These objects load data and make it available to other objects. The green objects are called operators. As a very general definition, operators manipulate data in some way. You can see that the data sources are connected to operators using pipes. These pipes act as conduits for passing data from one object to another. The orange object is the data flow representation of a scene view. Various pipes bring data into the scene from objects in the data flow. Objects in the data flow are selected by clicking them with the left mouse button. Selected objects are highlighted in light blue. Multiple objects can be selected by drawing a selection box around them. Objects can then be removed from or added to the selection by holding the control key and clicking them with the left mouse button. New objects are created in the data flow using the context menu for the data flow. Objects are categorized by a general object type, data sources, data writers, operators and views. See the Dataflow tutorial examples in the Eon Fusion user manual for more details about the specific objects that are available. The properties of an object are accessed using the Properties option on the object's context menu. 
The item's properties open in a separate dialog box. This example shows the properties for a scene object. An important part of the data flow, and of Eon Fusion in general, is the data structure view. We will look at it briefly as an introduction. The data structure view is accessed from the context menu for a specific object. It contains a visual representation of the data that is output from that object. In this case, we are looking at the data structure view for this bathymetry shapefile object. The data consists of a set of points with locations defined by vertices in X, Y and Z coordinates. Each point has an identification number and a depth attribute. The details pane at the left of the data structure view contains information about whichever item is under the mouse pointer. A table view can be accessed from the data structure view by right-clicking on the header of the relevant attribute group and choosing View Table. In this case we will look at a table of the vertex attribute values. Individual attributes within a group can be graphed by right-clicking the attribute and choosing Graph. This is a useful tool along with the table view for inspecting the data. We will now return to the scene view to examine some important aspects of that view. First of all we will look at the scene slider, which we saw earlier but did not examine in detail. By default, the slider controls the window of time that is visible in the scene. Moving the slider forwards or backwards moves the time window to a later or earlier time while displaying the same time extent. Adjusting the positions of the slider's endpoints changes the extent of time that is displayed. Zooming the slider is done by rolling the mouse wheel up or down. This is useful for controlling the amount of time that is represented in the slider at any given moment. You can also move the slider background from side to side by holding down the middle mouse button and moving the mouse. If the slider is not visible on the slider background, like this, an arrow will appear at one end. Clicking on the arrow will take you to the time slider. The slider supplies the fourth dimension in Eon Fusion's four-dimensional scene views. It is mapped to time by default, but can also be used to control the extents of any other attribute. Having briefly explored data structures, we can now make some sense of the scene contents pane, which makes up the left-hand portion of the scene view. You will now recognize these dataset representations. The datasets represented here correspond to the datasets that are passed into the scene view via pipes in the data flow view. This scene contents pane is where visualizers are added to the data. Visualizers are the objects that convert the raw data into the visual elements that you can see in the scene view on the right. For example, this visualizer is called GPS Track and is attached to the 1D Lines attribute group within the GPS Track vector set. The visibility of a visualizer can be toggled on and off by clicking on the aptly named Visibility Toggle at the left of the visualizer name. You can see here that toggling the visibility of the GPS track visualizer turns the green line in the scene on and off. Multiple visualizers can be attached to the same attribute group. We can see here that there are two visualizers attached to the 2D surfaces attribute group in the bathymetry vector set. The uppermost visualizer, in this case the digital elevation model with aerial photo visualizer, appears on top of any subsequent visualizers. If we toggle its visibility off, the digital elevation model coloured by depth visualizer becomes visible in the scene. These two visualizers provide an example of how the same data can be visualized in different ways by using different visualizers. Rule sets are specified in the visualizer properties. Rule sets determine how the data is interpreted on the screen. Here we can see a color rule set that colors the visualizer based on the value of a depth attribute. We will now build a data flow from scratch to demonstrate the process. The focus is on the workflow, so in some cases we'll quickly pass over some details. Our data flow tutorials and the user manual will help you to learn more about the specifics. First of all, we create a new data flow view to hold the data flow. Working this way keeps the main data flow area ordered. We can then open the new data flow by double clicking on it. 
this reveals a new blank data flow area. The first object in our new data flow is the data source. In this case, I want to open a comma separated text file, so I choose the tabular text data source. Once the object is created, I open its properties so that I can set it up. A key step here is to specify the file of interest. Then I need to give the object and the dataset a name. Then I need to set up the metadata. Setting metadata is a small time investment that pays off in a big way. Once it's set, metadata will propagate through the data flow and save you time and effort. In this case, we have a set of points loaded as vertices, so I need to specify the metadata for the vertex attributes X, Y and Z. The most important metadata settings in this case are the data type, usage, unit type and unit. Data type setting tells Eon Fusion which kind of data are being loaded. In this case, we're working with real numbers, so we choose real as the data type. The usage setting tells Eon Fusion what the attribute is to be used for. The unit type and unit settings allow Eon Fusion to convert units and unit types where required. This is also the place to set data projections, but we won't go into detail here. Once the metadata are set, we can OK the properties for this data source and then check the output data structure from the data source to ensure that the data have loaded correctly. The next step is to create a scene view and then pipe the output from the tabular text data source into the scene view. Next I open the scene by double clicking. Notice that the data structure of our data set is in the scene contents pane here at the left. I'll now add a visualizer to the 0D points so that we can see the data. Then I'll make the points a suitable size and give them a color. Note that the points appear in their proper places in the scene. This is because the usage metadata that we set earlier allows the scene to automatically detect which attributes should be mapped to the scene axis. I'll also add a grid gadget to give us some spatial context in the scene. Now we'll go back and create a surface from these points. A new operator can be inserted into the data flow by right clicking on the relevant pipe. In this case I want to create a 2D surface feature. In the properties of the operator I can either choose X and Y directly as the triangulation attributes or I can specify them indirectly via their usage. This is done by setting the usage and then setting the attribute selections to auto. Once we OK the properties, we can check the output data structure from this operator and see that we now have a 2D surfaces feature as well as the 0D points. Going back to the scene view, I can then add a visualizer to the 2D surface. This has been a very brief introduction to building a data flow, but it should give you a good idea of how it looks to work in Eon Fusion. 
Now you can try it for yourself. This tutorial has provided an introductory overview of Eon Fusion. Please take the time to explore the user manual and work through the Dataflow tutorials to learn more about the components that you have seen here. Thank you.